Hello guys and gals and welcome to another episode of Skills and Abilities. Today we're going to be going over the Necromancer uh, spell Bone Spirit. So Bone Spirit is unfortunately the lesser of the two abilities and it didn't always. It wasn't always that way. Bone Spirit used to have its own specific better uses than Bone Spear. And um, quite honestly there was quite a few things that Bone Spirit did better. Um, like tracking targets and, um, you know, just, just in general, like, it's total damage output. But as things changed and as synergies were added and as uh, things like the White Wand came to be, Bone Spear can actually do pretty much the same damage that Bone Spirit can do now, and if not better. Um, and unfortunately, due to the tracking nerfs that hit Bone Spirit back in, like, 1.09-ish, uh, Bone Spirit no longer tracks as well as it used to. Um, and um, I think mainly Bone Spirit is utilized in PvP these days. It does have quite a bit of PvP usage. Although in Pv PvE, which is, uh, you know, like regular combat versus monsters, Bone Spirit tends to outclass it in just about every way. And um, the only notable exceptions to this are when you can, like, screen lock something that is out of range. So one of the really cool things that you can do with Bone Spear is you can attack a monster that is at an extreme distance, and you can just lock your Bone Spear on the target. Um, and this allows you to just continue firing Bone Spears even if the target moves off the screen. Now there is a maximum distance, and once the target reaches that maximum distance, the Bone Spears will stop tracking the target. But for the time being, when the monster is within range but off screen, you will be able to just simply hit the target no matter where they are. Now, I feel like we need to talk about how Bone Spirit tracks its targets. That's kind of an important one. So, to understand how Bone Spirit tracks its targets, you have to understand the mechanics of the way that Bone Spear tracks. So when you fire Bone Spirit, it will not track a target if you don't fire it correctly. Notice it tracked and it hit him then, but not this time. So why is that specifically? Why is it only tracking and hitting him when I fire it close enough to him? Um, and the reason is, is because when you fire Bone Spirit, Bone Spirit will not hit or target anything until it reaches its target destination. So in other words, if I fire Bone Spirit and I say, Bone Spirit, I want you to go to that rock over there. Bone Spirit will travel to that rock and then upon reaching the rock, will decide who it wants to hit from that point. So notice if I fire at the rock, it will not hit the zombie that's over there. If I fire at this tree, it's within the search radius of the actual skill, and it will turn and come back to hit the zombie. But it really depends on if you're shooting it at the correct distance. So if you fire next to yourself, for instance, like this, the search radius is going to be around you. Um, imagine the search radius is like a small aura, and anything within the aura is going to be hit by the Bone Spirit. Um, and as long as you're firing your Bone Spirit near where the monster is, the Bone Spirit will reach its destination and then turn to come back to the monster and hit them. Um, this is important because if you are firing your ability like way over here or something, the search radius is over here. It's not over here. It's never going to hit this zombie behind me because I don't have the search radius on top of the monster. Um, and for the same reason, let's say, for instance, I was way over here and I wanted to hit this monster, and I was firing them like this. Until he gets within the search radius, they're not going to target him. So he has to come within that radius. Now, the radius is pretty big. Like, it's not like a tiny little radius or anything, but it's definitely small enough that if I, for instance, were to fire the Bone Spirit over here, there's a very good chance it might miss the zombie entirely. Whereas if I fire the Bone Spirit right here, it will find one of them and come back. 
Um, another interesting thing about Bone Spirit is that it will not hit anything on the way to its destination. So, for instance, if I fire a Bone Spirit at this target right here, with these three zombies in a line, it will not hit any of the zombies on the path to the zombie that I fired Bone Spirit at, which is a little odd. Um, it doesn't have a hitbox until it reaches its search destination. So once it reaches its actual destination, then it has a hitbox. Um, and this is important not only for PvE, but also for PvP. So if you're trying to specifically, say, get somebody's attention and kill them, like, say, for instance, you're utilizing this as a defensive mechanic. If you fire the Bone Spirit over here, the entire duration of the Bone Spirit moving from point A to point B, it can't touch anything until it reaches point B. So if the player, for instance in PvP, teleports on top of you before it reaches its destination where you clicked, they can't get hit by it. Um, and this is a, a, a definitely a, a bad play as far as PvP is concerned. Because as you can see, this if this represents the player that's tele-stomping me, he's not getting touched by the Bone Spirits, and he is then able to wail on me. Um, in PvP, or rather in, in the game, if you wanted those to hit somebody, you have to make sure that you're firing them in front of you, not behind the target. Now, if it's close enough, if the destination that you send the Bone Spirit to is close enough, it will return, as you can see. However, if it's too far away... It won't return. Um, and this is all very advanced mechanics when it comes to Bone Spirit. Um, in the old days, before, um, I think 1.09, um, Bone Spirit used to turn corners. So it's a very interesting thing is that, like, you have to have line of sight of the target that you're fighting. Um, let me see if I can find a nice little area to show you what I mean. Um, so let's say, for instance, I'm... Oh, Conviction. Wow. All right. It's a little spicy. I need to find a nice little corner to show you this. Unfortunately, uh, it's probably about the only place around here that's going to work. All right. So here's a nice little corner right here. And um, what I'm going to show you is that if I don't have line of sight of the target, he can't be hit. So even though these guys are technically within the radius... Notice, the Bone Spirit won't turn to them. But once he comes around the corner, the Bone Spirit will turn to him. But the zombie right here, which is totally within the search radius of the Bone Spirit, does not attract the attention of the Bone Spirit because he's not in line of sight of my Necromancer. So you have to keep this in mind when you're thinking about how your Bone Spirit will track a target is that it will not track any target that is not in line of sight of your necromancer. Now, back in the old days, like I said, this wasn't the case. You used to be able to fire your bone spirits around corners, even. So, like, I could stand right here and fire this, and the bone spirit would automatically go around the obstacle and hit the target. Um, and ever since they changed that, they definitely have kind of, like unfortunately made Bone Spirit a lot worse of an ability. One of its main and most redeeming characteristics was the fact that it could track a target almost indefinitely and even around obstacles. And now, unfortunately, as soon as the target has left line of sight, um, it can no longer track them at all. And the reason why we're focusing so heavily on the tracking of this ability is because it's really the only thing that Bone Spirit has going for it over something like Bone Spear. Because Bone Spear, number one, does pretty much the same amount of damage that Bone Spirit does. And number two, Bone Spirit can pierce, which means it can essentially do more damage than Bone Spirit can in those same situations. So if I'm fi fighting a group of monsters that's, you know, 10 or 20 thick, and I fire a Bone Spear, I can effectively do 5,690 times 10 if I can hit all of them with the same spear. Whereas I'm only ever going to get one hit of damage out of Bone Spirit total. Because as soon as it hits a target, it disintegrates. Um, there are tons of different ways that you can utilize Bone Spirit, though, um, and it's just one of those odd abilities that's going to fit into your Bone Spirit Necromancer 
as a secondary ability. You're definitely going to be using Bone Spear as your primary, as a poison, as a Bone Spear Necromancer. Um, and Bone Spirit is definitely going to be one of those abilities that you use, utilize occasionally. Um, it's going to come in handy when you're fighting, you know, like Pandemonium Diablo or Uber Diablo. Um, like, say you go to Frigid Highlands and you spawn Uber Diablo um, over here, which is which is a pretty common place to spawn Uber Diablo. Um, and you're able to get a Bone Spirit lock on him, which is a pretty common thing to do. So what you do is, is you come up here, you go to Frigid Highlands, and you try and get a lock on a monster that's off the screen, basically. So, like, what you would do is, is say I have these little little spike fiends over here. Um, I know where they are, right? So I could potentially do this. Send my bone spirits right where I know that they are, right? Off the screen, and try to kill them off the screen. And let's go take a look and see how many of them actually got killed. So as you can see, I was able to kill quite a few of them by using off-the-screen mechanics. By utilizing the fact that Bone Spirit will target the monster, whether I can see them or not, as long as I'm within line of sight and I cast it at the correct location. So in this way, you can kill monsters that you cannot see. And they can't fight back because they're out of range. Now, in this case, with these particular monsters, they won't chase you. Um, Uber Diablo will chase you sometimes and sometimes he won't chase you which is very strange because you would think that he would always chase you but occasionally when he gets far enough away he won't chase you back and so if you're able to put yourself in a situation like this where you can just spam your bone spirits off the screen you could potentially kill him off the screen now it's also important to talk about what happens to your bone spirits when the monster dies or when the monster leaves the range, uh, the maximum range for those abilities. So if, say, you're uh, targeting a monster that's way over here, right, you have him clicked on, so you can actually physically see his name at the top. So you've clicked on him, you're firing your bone spirits at him. You've got 10, maybe 20 bone spirits in the air, maybe you've got, you know, really good faster cast, and you've got all these bone spirits in the air, and he either A, dies... Or B, he leaves the maximum distance that you can possibly go for Bone Spirit to hit a target. What happens to your Bone Spirits at that point? At that point, they will continue to travel in a straight line from the moment that they lose target acquisition. So they will, they will stop moving at whatever point that they, you know, at, that they lose the target. So whatever direction that they were last facing at that particular moment that you fired them, they will continue traveling in that direction. Um, they will not seek new targets. They will not try to follow anything. Um, however, if they happen to hit something, they will dish out damage. Um, they become dumb spirits instead of smart spirits that will track their target at that point because you have this giant line of bone spirits that is traveling you know in whatever direction that they were last traveling in they cease to become smart they cease to become these homing missiles and they just simply continue to travel in the direction that they're going until they deplete themselves and um if you are unlucky enough to be hit by one you know, like in PvP, or if a monster is unlucky enough to be hit by one, they'll dish out their damage, but they don't do anything more than that. Um, I feel like we need to talk a little bit about the massive amount of points that you have to sink into Bone Spirit to actually get full damage out of it. Um, I talked about that a little bit uh, in the last episode with uh, Bone Spear, but um, the total number of points that you have to put in to max out Bone Spirit is 102, I believe. 102, so it's 20, 40, 60, 80, 100, 101, 102. So you have to put in 102 points to get the maximum effect out of Bone Spirit, and um, it's just really, really high in the skill category. Um, if you're a level 95 Necromancer and you have you know, done all your quests, you have 106 points. 
And maximum bone spirit is going to cost you 102 of those 106 points, which leaves you with four points left to utilize elsewhere. Um, another big downside of bone spirit and an upside, it's, it's both a downside and an upside, is that it's magic damage. So magic damage is an amazing damage type. Uh, because there are very few monsters in the game that have resistances to magic. And this is a good thing because the damage number that you see on here, 6,541, is the damage number you're going to get for the, for the most part. Uh, there are specific monsters in the game like Uber Diablo and Uber Mephisto that do have magic resistance. Um, I believe Uber Mephisto's magic resistance is 75%, which is pretty painful. But for the most part, you're at zero. However, what you have to take into account is, is that you can't bring it down either. So whereas a lightning or a cold sorceress or any other character could potentially bring a monster's resistance down to negative 100%, effectively doubling their damage output, there is no way to bring down the magic resistance of a monster. Which means that, again, you're stuck with exactly what you get. It's not going to be any lower than 6,541 for most of the monsters in the game, but it's also never going to be higher than that either. Um, and, you know, just to give you an example, a cold sorceress could be dishing out like 11k cold damage and then reduce that resistance down to negative 100%, effectively increasing that to 22,000, right? With Bone Spirit, you're doing 6,541, and since there's no way for you to double that damage, you're always doing 6,541. And if you ever come across a monster that's immune or highly resistant to magic, which does happen in Uber Tristram and some other zones, you're not bringing that resistance down. So your damage is only ever going to go down when it comes to Bone Spirit in, in PvE. Um, and it does make Bone Spirit and Bone Spear relatively ineffective versus things like Ubers, because Ubers do have extremely high magic resistance for some reason. Um, all in all, I do think Bone Spirit is a fun skill to play around with. And um, if you are a Bone Spear Necromancer, you're going to have maxed out Bone Spirit anyway. So it's going to be something that you're going to be able to play around with. It's going to be something that you can PvP with. But um, overall, I think it's kind of lackluster compared to some of the other Necromancer builds. Um, and it really comes down to that massive skill sink. Um, if you think about the Poison Nova Necromancer, the Poison Nova Necromancer can build 20, 40, 60. And still has, you know, quite a few points that they can throw in elsewhere. They could build a little army for themselves. They could grab a nice golem. They could get, uh, you know, some fancy curses. Whatever it is that they want to do, they've got extra points to play around with, right? The Summon Necromancer, same thing. You can put 20 points in the Skeletons, 20 points in the Mastery. you got 40 points there. You can get yourself a nice Golem. And, uh, and even after you throw, you know, 60 points into the Summoning Tree, you can still, you know, go somewhere else and grab something else. You can grab some nice curses. You can uh, maybe throw couple points into your armor, maybe grab a bone wall or something. You know, you've got like some extra points that you can play around with. But the bone spear and the bone spirit tree has no extra points. They've got nothing. They've got a whole four points left over at the end of their 102 point ridiculousness at level 95. And, uh, and those two points... I mean, those uh, four points that they've got left over, they're going to throw one into amp damage because it's a no-brainer. You definitely need amp damage at some point. Um, and they're going to try to get Decrepify if they can because Decrepify is the best curse for the Bone Spirit and Bone Spear Necromancers. They're definitely going to try and grab a Golem. But with the four points that they have, they might not even be able to get everything that they want. Um, which makes this particular build one of those few builds in the game that is just completely skill point starved. Um, and that's why you end up trying to get your hands onto mystical, magical items like perfect white bases. And I'm going to show you guys a white base right now that is kind of insane um, and may not even actually exist within the game. But um, this is the white rune word. And um, the base that it has has plus three bone spear. It has plus three Decrepify and plus three Bone Spirit. 
So this is what you would consider something like near a perfect white base. And what this does is it gives me Decrepify. So as a Bone Spear Necromancer, I might not have the points. I might not have the points to go down this side of the tree. Like one, two, three, four. That's too many skill points. I've only got four skill points total to my name left over after I beef up all my my my, my, you know, my synergies. I can't afford that. So having the Decrepify on your wand is extremely useful with these builds because it allows you to grab a skill without actually having to put points into it. And since a lot of these curses, like for instance Decrepify, are extremely good with only one point in them, that's really all you need. Um, and so as you go about your business as a Bone Spear or a Bone Spirit Necromancer, whichever one you tend to be, it's usually both, um, you're going to be looking for these magical wands that have things like Revive, Decrepify, Lower Resistance, um, and also maybe even Summon Resist or Golem Mastery or even like a particular Golem that you might want. Like it's kind of a, a up in the air. Like you're looking specifically for things that are going to save you skill points. If you want Decrepify, you're saving yourself four skill points there. One, two, three, four. By not having to go down this tree. If you want revives, you could save yourself one, two, three, four, five, six. That's a total of six skill points there that you can save yourself. And as you can see, we clearly don't have enough skill points to grab everything. So, and a very optimal white base for a PvE Necromancer would be something like this plus three Bone Spear, plus one to three Decrepify and plus one to three revive. That's usually like one of the most optimal wands that you can get for a bone spear slash bone spirit necromancer because that's going to save you six skill points here to get down to revives and it's going to save you four skill points here to get down to decrepify, um, which is a total savings of 10 skill points for a character that doesn't have enough skill points to do anything. And then you can take whatever skill points that you do have, those last four skill points, and you could maybe put them in Skeletons and Skeleton Mastery and maybe grab yourself a Golem. Um, in fact, it's, it's difficult to even get down to Summon Resist because if you put one point in Skeleton, one point in Skeleton Mastery, one point in Clay Golem, and one point in Golem Mastery, that's your four points right there, and you don't even have another point to put into Summon Resist, which is actually pretty imperative if you actually want to utilize any of these summons. I think that covers pretty much everything on Bone Spirit. Um, Bone Spirit definitely is an odd ability. And uh, maybe in the future, if they do a little bit of tweaking, maybe take out some of the synergies um, so that it's not so ridiculously oppressive in terms of, you know, how many skill points it costs, it could maybe come back as a useful skill for, like, hybrid builds. But as it is right now with a 100 skill point, 102 skill point investment to get any real good use out of it, it's, it's never going to be a good hybrid ability. Um, as always, thanks for watching, and uh, keep watching.